everybody. My name is Mark Hilliard. I'm a master here on the Arcanum. Tonight we're going to do a level 9 critique. This is the last level 9 critique because the new leveling system, actually they're not called levels anymore, they're called challenges in the Arcanum, things are going to change a bit. So, Elon, you made it. <laughs> Finally. Um, yeah, so we're here. So let's get this done. Um, Elon, if you would, uh, just tell us just a, a bit about the journey from level four to level nine and um, your expectations so far and if we've met your target goals to date. Well, first of all, let me go by the easy part. <laughs> My journey through the Arcanum has been more than I hoped for. And I don't say it just as, you know, oh, the Arcanum. I think that this cohort is really something else. Uh, and the camaraderie and, and, the, and what we do for each other is, is something beyond what I ever expected. I have made uh, great friends. I have met awesome people. And that's the main benefit of the Arcanum. Photography is just our excuse to get together. We're people that like it, but whenever a few crazy people like us get together, good things happen. And you can tell it by, by our text hangout, by the, the, the video hangouts that we have. And I've been trying to do some unofficial Arcanum business here in Mexico to get people to jump in from what you tell me it's not been as easy as, as it, I hope I, or I thought it would be here in Mexico but Mexican people are stubborn and they like to do things their way so once it starts rolling and you get the first ones it's gonna be great well I just invited a, another member from your country to join and I have yet to hear from him so we will see Oh no! You won't hear from for from him for another three weeks. We just entered the longest running holiday in the world, besides Ramadan. You know, it's a complete three week party party central in Mexico City, and people are looking forward to toward, towards their vacations and everything. So, be well. We will wait for it. We'll do what we have to do, right? Yeah. And as for my journey, I can tell you that my journey has been, for the first part, it was great. I thought it was going to be a breeze. But I encountered two main issues with my photography. The first one was running a new system. I was always an anchor shooter. I knew... If, uh, if I closed my eyes how to run my D90 and how to use a D7100 and how to use a D600 and, and whatever uh, camera I could put my hands on from the Nikon system. And just a couple of weeks before I got in, into the Arcanum, I bought my Sony camera. So it, it was it, it was great, but it was it, it, it was tough, especially getting to new to new works, understanding the, the ins and outs of the camera, the capabilities of the camera, and also my mindset. My, my first jump into photography was just go out and shoot. Whatever happens, happens, and not looking for something. Then I decided to go looking for something too badly, and I overdid the process. And now I'm starting to get into that middle ground, look, slowing down, getting multiple, uh, looking for multiple scenes or mu multiple uh, perspective of the same scene. And that's been really, really great since our last talk. And I've been able to, to use photography as an excuse to go out there to different places and this last place where I'm 
from where I took these five uh, photographs that we're going to look at is really a place I wanted to go there for a lo long time and never found the time nor the excuse to use it, to do it. And hopefully, besides my, my own agenda going up there, uh, the photos really do something for us and for the Arcana. Okay, that, that's a fair evaluation. Um, well, I have to say, um, I have when I downloaded your images um, early this morning and went through them, I was very impressed with them. Uh, this is your, your best submission to date. So why don't we go ahead and go through them, okay? Okay. Let me share my desktop. Here we go. Um, and if you would, tell us a little bit about this image not only uh, where you were, but what your vision was. When you were standing here looking at the scene before you ever put the camera to your, to your eye, what did you envision capturing? Well, first let me just explain where I was because we're going to be looking at several images of the same place, different scenes, different perspectives, but everything is the same place. Around 40 miles from Mexico City, there is this ancient volcano that erupted, some say, around 14 to 15,000 years ago. And it's one of the main natural attractions near Mexico City because in the middle of the volcano, there are these two lagoons. And all I ever read about was the two lagoons and the two lagoons, and especially right now in the winter time. It's supposed to be completely covered in snow. I just went three weeks ago, and it wasn't quite there yet. But when I got there, I just started looking at the place and saying, this looks out of this world. And I started looking for things that really expressed that sensation. And that rock was really one of them. The, the shapes, the angles, the, the, sh the shape of the rock, rock and, and the different components to it just seems like something out of a, a Hollywood movie, you know? From mm -hmm. Mars, from the moon, from wherever. And what I really liked about this shot is that what we see on the back to the right is the highest peak of the of the volcano and just to give you that 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 part in the back really looks like a, a mountain here on earth and then you have that rock in front that looks like something out of this world so just to get the, the contrasts between between the textures and the other thing is this shot was on our way back from the summit Bef when we were climbing, there were no clouds. It was completely blue, and we're going to see it on a couple of other photos. But when we came back, the clouds started appearing for, from behind the crater, and I really like how the clouds came uh, out on the back. Okay. And you get the colors from the sand and and the rocks and the moss and and everything that's that's over there. Well, and how on earth did you get down into this crater? Was it a tough? No, actually, you you can get and uh, we're gonna see it in a couple of images. But this place where I'm shooting right now, uh, this place I'm shooting right now is around four hundred. <laughs> 400 meters from the main uh, base. That's the final place that you can get there by car. So you start climbing. The actual climb with it was about 800 meters total. And this was the second stop that we did on the way to, to the top and back, and back from the top. 
God, that's quite a climb. Yeah. The, that, the, the peak you see on the back, that's the highest peak of the, of the crater, and it's supposed to be around 4,680 meters above sea level. All right, that's pretty high. Yeah. It's Mexico's fourth highest uh, mountain. Okay. The clarity and the sharpness that you captured here is just amazing. Man, look at this. I can pick out individual small stones in, on the crater wall clear at the back. And this has to be a major distance away. Um, I saw that you shot this at 28 millimeters. Um, which lens did, did you actually use for this on the 6000? This is a kit lens, the, 15, okay. the 16 to 55. Okay. All right, good enough. Um, I love the two lava columns. That's what these are. These, these, this is uh, magma that was coming up during, uh, out of major vents in the volcano. And there were probably vents all around this crater. Um, I bet there's the major vents are in, are, in, are in the crater lakes, aren't they? Yeah, that's the crater lake. Yeah. Um, this is a very desolate um, and moody place, and you've captured that, uh, that feeling in this image. Um, it, it's sharp. It's clear. Um, I love the composition. Let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, you've got the crater lake starting mostly down here in the lower left-hand corner, and we've got this C curve that's drawing us in. And this, this, this lava column coming out of this vent right here, um, it just creates this wonderful anchor in the lower left-hand corner. Um, and then with the mountain or the, the crater walls um, circling this, it just creates a very pleasing image. Um, it tells a story yet it has a certain amount of beauty and lots of mood, and it's definitely a desolate place. Uh, your post-processing looks extremely, extremely good. Uh, I love the treatment on, on the lava rocks here. Um, did you go over and play on these ash walls? Yeah, I did. I've been, since the last time we did a hangout, I've been playing a lot with the MacFun Creative Suite, mm -hmm. which is, so to speak, a spin-off from your so dear Nick Tools. Yeah, and don't you badmouth my Nick Tools now. No, 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 I'm not. So what, what I'm doing right now is that once I get basic tonal corrections and exposures done either on Lightroom or ACR, the first thing I go into is to intensify, to, to take care of the whole image, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back into Vivisa and do specific edits after I do the, the intensify layer. And it gives you, think, I don't know if you've used it, but it's like Vivisa but on a grand scale on every single part of the image. Mm -hmm. And then I, I went back with my visa. I worked on, on the tonal uh, part of the image and tried to intensify the contrast. And then I went with, back with my visa and I touched, I worked on the rock, I worked on the clouds, and a little bit on the sky to get, to get it into a more even tone because it was like a gradient. From mild blue on the my near the, the top of the crater, the crater wall, all the way to to an intense blue on the top. Okay. Do you have any idea what these uh, white spots are down here in the water? Are those birds? No, it's uh, a reflection of the sun. All these little tiny white spots. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that shot was right about around noon. So the sun had come up from the back of the of the crater wall and started lighting everything up. Wow. And remember, 
remember the shot that I showed you with the with the lens flare? Yes. This one was taken ten min ten minutes after that one. Okay. All right. Well, this is a stunning engine, image, and this is well worthy of of a level nine critique. In fact, it's so worthy. I'm going to give you a three out of three on this. Thanks. I really do like this. You only need five to pass this level, you know. Oh, the, the problem is the average. Uh huh. Well, as we it, can attest to that. Yeah. Well, if we do away with the average, the averages are done away with on the new leveling guide. No. Oh, okay. But we're still operating on the old one here, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well done. Well, well Thank done. You. I really like this. Another view. This is on our way up, and this was uh, on our, well, actually, the other one, I just remember, was on our third stop. Or uh, We did a total of five stops on the way up, and then five stops on the way down. So the other photo was on the third stop up, or the second one down. This one is on the other one, the second one up. And what I really liked about this one, these are the, the two, actually this is supposed to be the second, the smaller lagoon, but since it stopped raining here in Mexico about two months ago, they became two separate smaller lagoons. And what we're looking at right here and what really jumped at me was that this is where the lava went down when the crater erupted. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I, I really like, this is when we're going up. You, you can see the, the, the flare from the sun coming down, almost in the middle. Right here. You can see, yeah, you can see all the clouds down below the crater. Yeah, well, you're above the clouds here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were just above the clouds. So, and and what really jumped at me was talking about the clouds that you had to those two different groups of clouds. Yeah. You had the first one that's almost like a straight line, and then you have the whole clouds on uh, below that one, and just the, the color in the sky and the the, the place is 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 awesome. You know, it's. Uh, I've been dying to go there for many years, and I can tell you that I'm going back there many, many times again. We have so many different uh, uh, roads that we can go up and down the crater. There are several peaks. There are several things that you can shoot. It's, it's a place that you can go back, and every single time you go back, you'll get different shots. Right. You can actually, I didn't realize you could drive over the crater walls and drive down into it. You could drive up to about a year ago. Not on cars, you can, all the way up here you could drive with uh, bikes, with motorcycles. Cars you couldn't, but they stopped it around a year ago, and now you have to, to walk all the way up and down and everything. Really? People, in, in the summertime, people go there to, to, to swim in the lagoons. Okay. All right. Well, I really, really like the sun rays coming down out of the top. That just adds a wonderful um, element to the composition. Anytime you can capture a landscape with this, and this is spreading way out, you know you've got a winner. But I, I just I, I love the overall composition. Um, I like the leading lines of the roads coming down in. But this it's like there's this big tongue of mountain that's coming out and going down and tasting the clouds down here. That's kind yeah. of a garish way to state it. But I can't think of a better description for it. Uh, being above the clouds and seeing this this flat, it's almost this watery look. But you, you know it's not because you're seeing some structure in the clouds here close at hand. Um, I just love everything about this. 
Um, your post processing is very well done. You, you captured the the real key element to a successful <laughs> landscape. Alternating areas of dark, light, dark, light, and so on to provide stair steps to draw the user's eyes into and stepping through the image. And you're doing the same thing in the vertical. We've got this darker, lighter, um, very light, then back to dark blue, and then another layer of clouds that are light. Um, this is a real winner, Elon. Um, nice. Um, now, I'm going to tell you what I don't like about this. Right here. This, this is dust on your sensor. Yeah. And you've got two more of them over on this side, but they're not as bad. But I found three total. Um, they're not too bad. Up oh, there's one there. See it? Yeah, I I think that those ones are really small, not small ones, but really shallow dust spots. Because I went just before I went all the all the, all the post processing, I took out just above the the the, the smaller lagoon. Up to a third way up in the sky, there was a really big one. Oh yeah. And almost above the clouds, just before the one that you showed me, there was another one. So okay. this one might might be, you know, I didn't catch them at first, but then maybe with with the, the post processing, they they came out. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I miss them all the time in my images, and unfortunately, this is just something that we that we have to be uh, vigilant in our cleaning because it's fine for web-based display, but boy, as soon as you put that on papers, they just leap out at you, don't they? Yeah. Um, wonderful image. Um, and that would be the only suggestion that I have to you on this is just uh, policing it and sweeping those dust spots up a little bit better. I mean, there, there's another one right there. And those are two big ones. The other ones are small and very difficult to find. You've got one yeah. there and one there. Um, beautiful work. Uh, I love this. And I'm going to give you a three on this one, too. Didn't think I'd do that, did you? Well, I. this one was actually one of the, the images that, while I really liked it, I was... <laughs> Trying to see if I could find an, another one to to submit, but the clouds just did it for me. You know that, yeah. that like you said, like the tongue of, of the of the crater going into the clouds that just made everything I just. I had to put the, that photo in there. Yeah. Mark? Yes. Oh, I just, uh, I was listening. Tell me about this image, please. Okay. This image on our way up, it, the, the, uh, one of the sides of the crater was completely covered in these weird looking flowers. Golden in color. Uh, they're cactuses, actually, they're not flowers. And that's the only place in the world where, where they grow. And they're a, a direct. Give me, give me one second. Uh, they're a, uh, a direct. Uh, they were made possible by the eruption that happened there. Okay. And they're, they're actually protected. Uh, we saw many people there taking them out with their boots and everything. And on the way back down the mountain, the police there would take them from them so that they protect them and don't let them uh, uh, die off or whatever. Okay. But yeah, we, have a, we have a lot of that here in South Carolina too, uh, protected plants. You, you, yeah. 
go to prison if you take them. Well, here they're a little bit lighter on the on the punishment, but uh, they're they're awesome. There there was another image that I really liked and that I, I ran through through uh, Robert that the composition was a whole lot better, but I couldn't get the the flower to stand out. Okay. So that's why I picked this one. And actually, if uh, this is already a crop, and what I try to do here is put the flower on a power, on a lower PowerPoint within the rule of thirds. Okay, works. Um, I, I love the black and white treatment with the the one spot of color in it. Um, which which black and white conversion tool did you do this in? Tonality. Okay. I love the treatment on this. Um, it's clean, it's sharp, it tells a wonderful story of desolation and, and carving a life out of just bare stone, hanging on and, and, and uh, thriving in this rough environment. And, and, and one of the things uh, from our, our last hangout that we did, uh, you and me, I tried not to fall in love with the main subject. This was by far not the best flower, but it was the best composition and the one that provided the best contrast and, and the ability to take or to intensi intensify the, the, the gold tone of the flowers. So that that's one of the things that I was thinking in the post-processing. No, it, it works and you achieved it. Um, I was looking at a crop a few minutes ago, uh, a further crop, and the reason I the reason I was doing that was because the road is is slightly distracting coming into the image here, and getting rid of the road as a distraction makes this even much more powerful. Um, I do think that you've got more than enough resolution to, to do this and by cropping in just so ever more look at the, the two anchors we've got we've got this wonderful colored flower okay but yet look at this rock here beside this doesn't this make for an amazing balanced image yeah um, that could that's my only suggestion for improvement on this and originally I, I I was looking at this to get the road out of the out of the image because the road really is slightly distracting okay um, and it works very well with the way you had it but um, I would classify uh, that image as as a as a six or a seven but this crop is a solid 10. Um, do you see the difference between the two? Yeah. Let me go back. So we go from this to this. And this one is so stunning. This one be, would be worthy of hanging on a wall. Um, that's an amazing capture, Elon. Thanks. I'm I'm envious of this, but do you see why I say that this this road coming up down, even though it's coming down on a diagonal, it's still distracting. Yeah, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but it just a minor crop would improve this image drastically. Um, I like this. I'd like to see more of this style from you. You seem to have a real eye for this. Um, I'm going to give you a, a, a two on this out of three, okay? Okay. Um, I do like this, but like I said, I like it a lot better. Um, cropped in a bit tighter and placed that, that flower on the, uh, the right one-third power line, okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's just so much more powerful. Oh yeah, that just that's much more powerful, and then the rock balances that 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 green plant. Lovely image, good work, man. Thanks.
All right. Tell me about this beauty. Okay. This no, one. Not, never mind. I, I don't want to know. I just. No, you, re this, you really this, want this to know. This is a solid three, Alon. Okay. Just I mean, let I me explain. Okay, now go ahead and tell me. Okay, let me explain the scene, okay? Right now, uh, as I told you before, this is the fourth highest mountain in Mexico City. Well, in Mexico as a country. Mexico has. It's the only country in the world where its four tallest mountains are all volcanoes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, and their part, it's called the Belt of Fire that runs from the Pacific Ocean all the way out to the Gulf of Mexico, where you have several volcanoes in line. And that's what I try to capture. Just for ex uh, explaining that and distance okay okay we have this is the back side of of the crater okay. of, the, of the mountain then we have the first clouds all the way up to the first mountain ridge okay that's a valley that's that's one city called Toluca okay is this a live volcano over here yeah yeah that's a live volcano wow. okay if you can crop right back out so that we can do it so we have the Green Mountain, then we have all the, the clouds and the fog and everything just below, right where the, the pen tool is, you have the first ridge of mountains. Mm -hmm. That's a national park. Toluca in the first part of the image, or the second part of the image, then we have La Marquesa National Park, then if you can crop back in where you were, or zoom in where you were, okay. On the back side of this ridge, we have Mexico City. Oh. Okay. This whole clouds and things, this is Mex part of Mexico City. Okay. It's really close to this volcano. Yeah. When it erupted ar around the first time, around 18 years ago, well, the first time in modern history, we had uh, we, uh, we had ash, we had everything, and it's kept uh, being active for almost 20 years. Okay, that volcano, the, the active one, it's it called Popocatépetl, which is the second tallest mountain in Mexico. And then you have to to the left of it, you have the third one, which is is the Cihuatl. And I have a separate image that I'm working for for the cohort, which is a zoom of these images. I'm, and I'm going to share with the cohort the, the story of both mountains, because it comes from the, from the old uh, Aztec people. Okay? Okay. And in a clear day, you can see between them, you can see the peak of Mexico's tallest mountain, which is the Pico de Orizaba. This was too hazy, so we couldn't see it. So that's the whole scene from the first, from the point of view, outwards. Okay. All right. Let me ask you: Are these extinct cones down here too? No, th those are just hills. Maybe they were formed when this uh, exploded. Okay. And and and, and the ridge is just an, a national forest. It just if I'm not mistaken, just behind this middle ridge that you have to the right of the Popocatépetl, uh, inside in, in, in the National Park, there is the Mexican Nuclear uh, Energy Institute, which is okay. Mexico's nuclear plant. But this is, you know, going completely from outside of Mexico City, then you get Toluca, La Marquesa, Mexico City, and then the two volcanoes on the back. Okay. So they built a nuke plant uh, right next to an active volcano. No, 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 the, no, the, the nuke plant. That volcano, from where I'm standing, that volcano is around uh, 300 miles. Whoa, uh, that's a big monster then. Yeah, yeah, that one is all, it's, uh, it's, a, it's almost 
I think it's above 5,500 meters from sea level. Okay. Well, let's talk about this image. Um, I've already oh. given you your, your, your grade, but I, I, I want to talk about this the C line coming in here. Just one thing, Mark, before we go into the critique. You see this base camp on the, on the bottom left? Yeah, that one. That's the last place that you can reach with cars, bikes, or whatever. Okay. So we hiked all the way up, and then from here you go down to uh, to the right. You go down to the lakes. Oh, man, that's you see nuts. There's... That's a huge walk, isn't it? Yeah, I was gassed halfway up. So. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have made it up this hill, so you're way ahead of me. Um, but anyways, you've got this wonderful sea line starting here, going in and crossing over to the left, and then it just automatically leads your eyes right down into this valley here in the side of the volcano. Um, it's wonderful. It's a compositional element. But then again, you've got the whites, the darks, the white, dark, white, dark, these stair steps of contrasting elements that just really draw our eyes in. And as I look at this image, I actually see two images here. Okay? Yeah. Uh, we've got the overall image that works very well. Um, this image here. Okay. All right. And I love these alternating uh, ridges and valleys and the fog and the mist with this active volcano off in the distance. Um, so you've got two real powerful images built right into this one, okay? Okay. Um, again, watch your sensor dust. Of course, I could, I'm going to end up saying this on every one of these, I know. Um, but, Yvonne, this is a stunning image. Um, the exposure, the composition. Uh, look at this, this. Here, we can actually pull out the detail of the hardened lava on on this here and how it's it's flown down. Uh, we're starting to recover with plants here. Just wonderful. I love everything about this. You you did an excellent job. And remember, I was telling you about the second image that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the second image that you pointed out. But instead of it being a crop from a, 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 a wider perspective, it's, it's actually zoomed in with the lenses. Okay. So, That's so it, always it, better. Yeah. You're going to see it maybe next week in the, in the cocoa. All right. Let's talk about this one. Well, this one was... Uh, going up, going up, I got this reflection on the lake from the the rocks on on the on the first ridges. To, yep. Or, and I just said to the guys that were uh, hiking with me, you know, guys, go up. I'm gonna take pictures and I'm gonna catch with you, uh, catch up with you later. And the first thing I wanted, uh, I just wanted to get a good perspective of the of the bigger lagoon. And some of the of the crater wall. The first thought was to do it in color, but then I decided uh, I had the final image in color, and then I decided to to see how far tonality could go and get an amazing black and white white image. And actually, I went with one of the presets that it took everything almost. Everything that was black and then turn it into white, almost fooling you. Okay. Like, if it's. I really like is first the colors in, in the crater wall that we know from other photos that they're black, seeing them here in light colors, and the reflection in, in the lake is, is incredible. Oh, it is. It's stunning. Uh, that lake becomes the main compositional element 
with the supporting actors of the, of the, um, the crater walls going all around. Uh, and you're right, this works very, very nicely in black and white. I would say this is a much more powerful image than the color version. Um, this dark, these dark areas of the sky here and here, what would be? Well, the darker parts is, I think that what we're what we're starting to see here with the with the lighter parts is some of the the hay and some of the clouds start that you could not see with your bare eye where they're uh, starting to to come from behind the mountain. No, we're the seeing plane. holes in the clouds here and up here. Yeah, but wow. if you see if you see the the raw file that you have. I don't recall seeing them. Yeah, in the but you image. know what? When you do a black and white conversion, see the clouds here. Yeah. When you do a black and white conversion, it's going to pull out details that you wouldn't normally see. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I am kind of understanding what I'm seeing here now. Um, this is just wonderfully post-processed. Um, again, as I said with the black and white with the color uh, cactus flower in it, you need to start uh, practicing some more of these, okay? Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you a three on this too. Um, this is very exciting uh, to see your growth on this level, Elon. I've got to tell you, I'm very proud of you for the work that you've accomplished here this time. Yeah, and, and there's something that I really like to point out, that we didn't have the chance to do the level 6 HDR, not critique, but interaction, because yeah. you were away, and I did it with Rhonda. And I had some ideas on, on HDR that were based on my old camera, you know, mm -hmm. not in terms of dynamic range and the capabilities of my newer sensor but knowing that oh I have now 24 me megapixels instead of 10 that I held on my old camera but the dynamic range and everything so I, I was thinking like I had the capabilities of my old camera just used, taking advantage of the new uh, sensor mm -hmm. so that's one of the things that we talked about when we did our private hangout that I just did too much we, with HDR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, everything was HDR. Yeah, and, and, uh, and I just overshoot it, and this time I, I didn't do a single bracket in the hundred or so photos that I took, that I took there. You're, you're learning. I'm uh, trusting the camera, you know, I'm starting to learn and to trust the camera. Not every scene requires HDR, um, and the cameras can usually capture the dynamic range of the scene. And that is very evident. And this is really, really. All right. Well, I know we have another one that we're going to talk about in a little while. Yeah. But in terms of this, um, this worked out very, very well. Um, I like the work that you did. Um, I find that uh, this is a vast improvement. Um, keep going along this this path that you're on now. You're going to get through uh, the next sphere really, really fast. Uh, I'm just looking for you know as I learn more of of the technical side of photography, which is one of the main objectives that I set forth within the Arcana, and learn to trust more my my camera, my my eye, you know, to to get subject that that stand out, you know. I think it's gonna be. Uh, I I really can't wait to get further along. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, you got to learn not to second guess yourself too often, or you you'll drive yourself nuts. Yeah, um, but but very very well done. I'm going to invite everybody to to come out and make comments on all of this this evening. Um, please join us, guys. Bravo, Elon! Congratulations. Good stuff. Thanks, Bob. A great set. Thanks, guys. You you're gonna see one of the ones that you like, James, if you. Yeah, <laughs> have the patience and wait for ten minutes. It's all good. I think, I, I think I, I agree with you. What you said is you get one of those places you go and took thousands and thousands of pictures time and time again. I, it's a great set. You know, glad you got there finally. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, I'm going to stop the broadcast here. Uh, before we go on to the second part, and I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, he did a magnificent job. And some of these images I would welcome in my own portfolio. And that's, Thanks, about, that's about the highest compliment that one photographer can give another. <laughs>